good, everybody? Welcome back to the Blitz Setting Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe Orr, and today we will be breaking down the 2024 national, early national sign of their recruiting class for the reigning HBCU national champions, Florida A&M. Now, keep in mind, this is the breakdown for the kids who have signed, not committed, but signed. I do know who committed. Okay, and if you want me to make separate videos on them, I will, but this is just for who signed that letter of intent. So, the first person that we're going to talk about for FAMU in this 2024 class is Daniel Richardson. 5'10", 205 pounds from Florida Atlantic, a quarterback. Maybe the heir apparent to Jeremy Musa, who knows? So he attended Central Michigan before Florida Atlantic, okay? But at Florida Atlantic is where he had his production. He had 2,001 yards passing, 13 touchdowns. He was AAC Offensive Player of the Week in 2023 after a monster performance where he threw for 384 yards and a 56 to 14 win versus uh, Southern Florida. So this is a guy who came in as a backup after he left Central Michigan. He came in as a backup at FAU. The starter got hurt versus Clemson. He came in versus Clemson, and for the rest of that year, he just proved to be the guy for them. So he had 13 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Now, one thing I would like to see from him is that interception to touchdown ratio uh, be a little bit more not so balanced. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need that to be lopsided with more touchdowns, but I think he'll figure that out, especially if Coach Simmons saw something in him and Coach Respin saw something in him to offer him the scholarship. They clearly are looking at this kid as an heir apparent. We'll see what happens going forward. Next up, we got Montre Edwards, a three-star defensive tackle from Colin Community College. Now, Colin is getting a lot of guys to HBCUs this year. That's something to keep an eye out on, by the way. But Montre is 6'3", 290 pounds. He is an all-conference defensive lineman who is just an absolute beast, in my opinion. But here is a guy who started his career at Missouri and at Southern Miss. Then he goes uh, to Juco, and he has four sacks, 30 tackles, and six tackles for loss in his final year at Colin. Now, he had a few offers from Grambling, McNeese, FIU, and Western Kentucky. Me personally, looking at Montre Edwards, I think this is a valuable piece to Florida A&M's defense. This is what those Juco guys are for. You bring them in, they provide more depth, they provide a lot more production to the position, and I mean, you don't really take a fall off there. So I like this addition, Montre Edwards. Can't wait to see him play for FAMU next year. Next up, we got Sage Enos, okay? 6'4", 240-pound tight end from Clemson University, one of the most hyped prospects in FAMU's upcoming class. Now, he was a former three-star prospect, and this is a guy who is returning to Tallahassee after actually playing for FAMU legend Quinn Gray in high school. So he's returning home to Tallahassee, okay? And he had six receptions, 77 yards, 12.8 yards per catch, during his time at Clemson, didn't really see a lot of playing time, didn't get a lot of production, but that is what he was able to muster during his time in Death Valley. Now, he played a total of 449 snaps on offense for the Clemson Tigers, throughout 41 games for Clemson, and he only had two starts throughout those 41 games. So now he's coming to the, uh, the FAMU, and he's going to be a great weapon for whoever's quarterback one, whether that's Daniel Richardson or whoever it may be. He's going to be a great weapon, and I imagine how hyped they were with him, that they are going to incorporate him in that offense from the get-go. After Sage Enos, we have Jeremy Fishkin. Now, here's a guy out of high school, 6'5", 300 pounds, monster, right? Monsters, you love that size. So 6'5", 300 pound offensive lineman from Stoneman, Stoneman Douglas High School, and he had offers from McNeese, North Alabama, Maryland, and FIU. This kid is the epitome of strong. The same way I was hyped when FAMU landed TJ uh, DeMoss out of high school, it's the same way I'm excited about this kid because I kind of see similarities, but I think this kid is stronger than, than what TJ was coming out of high school. This kid has a 300 of... Uh, this kid has a 300 hang clean. He has a 335 bench press, and he squats 405. So he's coming in pretty strong already. With that college weight room training schedule, he's going to be even more of a beast. I mean, the sky is the limit for Jeremy Fishkin. I love his game, and we will continue to see how his game progresses throughout the years at FAMU. Now, he might not see the field early on in his career. You know, he may be a sophomore, 
junior year kind of guy, but we'll see him on the field eventually, that I am sure of, and I think the strength that he has is going to be a big reason why he gets on that field sooner rather than later. Next up on the list, we have Davion Walker. Okay, 6'2", 180-pound wide receiver from Vanderbilt. Now, I think during his time at Vanderbilt, he only saw action in one game, not a lot of playing time for Vanderbilt, but he is originally from Warner Roberts, Georgia. He's a nice-sized target. That's what I think of him. I think he is a nice-sized target who, honestly, he's one of those guys who has a lot of physicality in his game of wide receiver, right? He can use his body. He can use his wingspan to... Uh, kind of shield the way defenders and catch the football. I think his catch radius is really good. I think the sky is the limit for Davion Walker. Now, he had offers from Jacksonville State and Houston, and he ended up choosing FAMU. So this is a good get for FAMU and that wide receiver core, which is already deep within itself, right? It's already crazy. They already have dogs that hasn't even played yet that we haven't seen yet, like Kareem Burke or four-star wide receiver Robert Lockhart, Christian III. So, I mean, they're, they're just deep. And whoever gonna be, whoever's going to be quarterback one for FAMU has a lot of weapons at their disposal. Love this move by them. Next up, you got Jalen Neal. So, Jalen Neal is an athlete from Buford High School in Georgia. Now, anybody who knows anything about that program, they produce a lot of, of top talent in the country. So listen, man, he's coming from a great program already, which is why I already know this is a good get for him. He played both sides of the ball in school, helping his team to an 11 and two season. He is 5'10", 180 pounds. He had offers from Michigan State, Charlotte, Arkansas, Army, Colorado, Duke, Yukon, Eastern Carolina, Georgia Southern, Liberty, Penn State. This kid, could have been in the FBS because, like I said, that is a high school program that puts out great talent. So the fact that FAMU was able to get him, they own their game right now. Like, Coach Respus is in his bag. You feel me? As far as Jalen Neal, the athlete, I like him a lot. And I think he's going to be a big playmaker for FAMU. The thing is, they are so deep, right? I don't know. Where do you, where do you put him on the field? That would be up to FAMU's coaching staff's discretion. But I know wherever you put him at, he's going to be a big-time baller. It's, the only question is when he gets on the field. I'm, I'm quite confident in saying that he'll be a playmaker. He'll be one of those, those great playmakers in the SWAC. It's just a matter of when. I just need to know when he'll be on the field. Next up, we have Aceon Cobb, another wide receiver for FAMU. 6'3", 195 pounds from Orlando, Florida, where he played at Jones High School. Now, he was a three-star prospect who, in his senior year of high school, totaled 25 receptions, 715 yards, 10 touchdowns, and he do, he just had a spectacular year. To rack up that much yards in just 25 catches, that means he was taking it the distance. So, A.C. Cobb is a transfer from FIU. He only been there a year. He has about three years left of eligibility, so there's not much to say on his time at FIU, but he did release his practice footage, and I'll tell you right now, shifty is definitely a word that I will use. Playmaker, Superman changing the phone booth. If you've heard that saying before, it means he doesn't need much space to move to maneuver. So I like AC on Cub. There's, no, there's really not much I can give you about him because, again, he didn't play at FIU. He only stayed there for a year, but there's something in him. There's something in him. That is going to be special. And I think he's a kid that's going to take the distance if we're going off of what he did in high school. He's a kid. He's a rack boy. Like, let's be honest. 25 catches, 700 yards. A lot of that is rack yardage. You're a rack boy. So he fits that culture perfectly. Next up, we got Demori Tate, the guy everybody's talking about right now. Another five-star coming into the swag. This is the second former five-star in a, in, a, in a row for FAMU. This guy was top 20 in the country as a player, in the nation. He was the number three defensive back in the country coming out of high school. Quite frankly, he was really one of those guys. He was a part of a top four recruiting class for Florida State. The thing with him is, during his time at Florida State, he struggled to get on the field. That's just the reality of it. Um, and I read this on a Florida State site when they announced his departure. He struggled to get on the field, and unfortunately, that lead to him making most of his contributions through scout team. And he did see some game action, okay? He saw game action 
2021 versus UMass in a 59-3 win where he totaled a few snaps, like 14 snaps, but he didn't record any, any stats or something like that. So now you're looking at a guy who, like Cardell Thomas the year before, didn't have a lot of stats. Things just weren't going his way at the Power 5 level. So now he's here, and we're going to have to see what happens. He could be a Phillip Webb, who was a former five-star linebacker for Jackson State. He could be a Cardell Thomas for in what he was for FAMU. Or he can just completely blow everybody out of the water and have a great year at the sweat. We just do not know. We're going to have to see tape on Demory Tate. But I am excited because here's the thing. that I don't believe in bust, right? Especially, especially when you're in, in at the college level and you're a five-star recruit and you tell me that you, you're telling me that you just had no success like none at the collegiate level i don't i just don't think he's in the right situation i think now that he's at famu maybe and last but not least jalen smith another wide receiver for famu check this out jalen smith is coming from colin community college this is a guy who is a juco all-american and an all-region player he totaled 507 yards and four touchdowns in his last season at Colin, and he earned offers from Liberty, Southern Miss, Morgan State, okay? And this dude is just phenomenal. He's a playmaker. And he has speed. Like, like clearly that's FAMU's thing, right? We know that by now. But I didn't expect him to be that tall and to be that fast. One thing I will say about him is that I bet he's on the field right away because this kid gets separation easily, like nobody's business. I love his ability to run routes. The way this kid is able to get separation is what a lot of receivers in the SWAT cannot do, and he'll be a nightmare for a lot of SWAT DBs. So... It is important to mention that he didn't start out at Colin. He was at Bowling Green, and then he announced his intentions to leave Bowling Green, go to Juco, got his weight up, and now he's back at the Division One level. So listen, this is the guys that have signed with FAMU for the 2024 recruiting class. We're going to see. We are really going to see how this plays out. Congratulations again to FAMU on a fantastic season, okay? And this right here, this recruiting class is telling me that they are doing everything in their power to keep that run going, as they should. This is a very impressive recruiting class, not to mention the commits that they got who are going to sign their letter of intent, just haven't done it yet. That's why they're not in the video. Um, but this class is looking damn good. Damn good. So other schools, they're going to either have to get with it or they're going to have to see FAMU in Atlanta for the next few years. So with that being said, y'all are watching the Blitz City Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe Orr. FAMU fans, tell me what you think about this class down below. With that being said, I'll see y'all next time. I'm out. Peace.